inflammatory issue, but I can't, you know, I can't really see anything on his scalp that would indicate that he's having an inflammatory issue. This could just be telogen effluvium too. That's difficult to do that under, you know, some bright light, but you can see that there are some hairs over here in the picture where you started out. There are some hairs over here that are very thin in their width. Moving forward. <laughs> okay, so it's day and night, really, but it's also different lighting, right? Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another hair loss review video and we're back on the Tressless Hair Loss subreddit, one of the biggest hair loss communities on the internet. And we're looking at this user by the name of JanBetter11 and the title of their post is quote, progress nine months finasteride, two comma five months minoxidil, unquote. I'm not sure what he means by two, maybe two to five months minoxidil, maybe he used oral or topical first then went to oral i don't know not sure what that means over here two comma five but anyway let's have a look at their progress right so i'm assuming this is where they started out of course because it's the first picture in the camera roll but if we look at the scalp real quick we can see some things so obviously he's a diffuse thinner in the middle of a scalp um, there's a lot of, I would say maybe some hair loss going on, but it might be debatable whether or not he has any like scalp inflammation issues. I certainly can't see it due to the lighting if there is any, um, but it just looks like his scalp, the top of his scalp has lost a lot of density. That being said, you can see there's some sort of discoloration going on at the roots um over here right if you can follow along with my magnifying glass cursor um yeah some lighter coloring going on some discoloration at the roots of course um that could be a sign of some sort of stress going on at the base of the follicle so at the hair follicle level um so that which is growing more recently coming from the base going outwards is possibly dealing with some sort of oxidative stress or some sort of you know inflammatory issue or microinflammatory issue but i can't you know i can't really see anything on his scalp that would indicate that he's having an inflammatory issue this could just be telogen effluvium too that's one thing right this may not be just aga it could also be telogen effluvium so let's look at the other pictures in the camera roll so that's his baseline Moving forward, <laughs> okay, so it's day and night, really, but it's also different lighting, right? But even if that's the case, you can clearly see that the middle section has filled up a bit. Um, but I am questioning if this is just uh, a stylistic way of combing his hair, right? Maybe he put the hair that was growing on the sides, he swept it over. Um, but I would say maybe there's a degree of recovery going on but if you look really close right you can see that there are some light spots in his scalp particularly around this hair whirl over here that i'm pointing at um there are some lighter areas the areas that are less with density right so less density in some areas but for the most part it looks like he did grow back some hair right now, in some of these sort of hair loss progress pictures, you have to be careful because a degree of these sort of quote unquote hyper responders, they could be responding to medication very well, right? Or they could be coming out of a telogen effluvium episode or a confluence of both. So that's something to consider. And likewise, for people who suddenly, you know, lost a lot of hair after being on treatment for, you know, three years and they had great progress, but now they're suddenly losing hair, especially if they're on dutasteride, because we know dutasteride between 0 0.5 milligram up to 2.5 milligram suppresses scalp DHT between 50 to 80%. So especially on dutasteride, if you notice a sudden loss of hair in a short amount of time, that may not be you regressing. It's very likely that you're not regressing in the sense that, you know, DHT is winning again. But it could be the case that there's some sort of scalp issue at play. Now, it's even less so if you're on finasteride. That's happening, especially after years. It could be the case that, you know, you're 
DHT is sort of catching up to you, right? That threshold you brought the DHT down to was only enough to buy you a little bit of time retaining to your hair. So it kind of just slowed the rate of hair loss as opposed to taking something more potent, potent like the um, dutasteride, sorry, that would, you know, give you a better chance at keeping your hair. So it could be the case that this guy had some sort of scalp issue or he's just recovering. And this is the last picture in the camera roll. Um, obviously day and night difference, right? If you compare the last photo after nine months of treatment compared to the beginning, right? And it could be the case that he recovered from telogen effluvium, but sometimes telogen effluvium is showing you what's going on, you know, on your scalp, right? If you're facing AGA, sometimes that telogen effluvium is just showing you the issue. Um, when it comes to your more sensitive hair follicles, right? The ones that are possibly a bit more susceptible to DHT. But comparing the two, right? You can clearly see the progress at the start and at the nine month mark. But it's still a different sort of hair styling. His hair is a bit more like spiked up over here, a bit more, you know, less combed, so to speak. But over here, he could have very well had gotten out of the shower, right? And it's probably making his scalp look a bit worse because long hair tends to clump up a bit. But it shouldn't clump up in this fashion to the point where when you're looking at the scalp, you can see areas that are kind of miniaturized, right? You see hairs that are very thin in their length. And it's a bit hard to kind of pinpoint the exact visual density over here, right? Because this guy has a uh, lighter color hair. So... It's difficult to do that under, you know, some bright light, but you can see that there are some hairs over here in the picture where you started out. There are some hairs over here that are very thin in their width. So because that's the case, thin width hair, um, thin diameter hair rather, um, it's possibly that he's dealing with AGA too, right? Not just telogen effluvium. But the ending result was pretty good. So let's see what he says in the comments section. So we have some people over here, this user known as Far Idea 196 So we have some users in the comments section, another user by the name of Far Idea 9616 says, quote, congrats and fuck you, Blondie. <laughs> so, you know, that's pretty interesting. Um, the original poster, Jan Better, so the guy in this picture and these before and afters, um, he says in the comment section that, quote, treatment started with one milligram finasteride daily nine months ago and went down to 0 0.5 milligram two months ago to reduce costs after introducing topical minoxidil foam once a day. So, unquote. So he actually reduced the frequency or rather the dose rather of his finasteride use because i guess he's facing some you know monetary issues so and, and to be honest 0 0.5 milligram is about the same as one milligram in terms of efficacy so if you really ever run into like supply issues you can always cut the one milligram oral finasteride tablet such that now you've kind of doubled your supply right and that can last you longer if you're kind of like dealing with supply availability issues. So that's pretty cool. You know, that's a pretty cool sort of tidbit to add in. Um, and they also went on topical minoxidil foam once a day. So that's pretty cool. So another person known as Rusty Rocket 9 or Rusty Rockets 9 says, quote, so is topical better, you'd say. And Jan Better 11 says, quote, for me, it's working perfectly but I seem to be a good responder. For some people, the pills work better. I was scared more of minoxidil pill sides than finasteride sides. That's why I started with the foam, and now I will stick to it. Very easy to use. Unquote. And there are people asking about side effects. <laughs> um, I'm not going to read all these comments, but it looks like, you know, this guy had some pretty good improvement. And over here, he says to another person asking about how long it took for results to show. Jan Better 11 says around four to five months. That's when they really noticed their uh, 
their hair thickening up and becoming more dense, as they say in the comments. So that's pretty much it for this video. Now, this is a pretty good improvement. I would say, again, he had a collection of Telgen effluvium and underlying androgenetic alopecia. That being the reason, if you look at his ending result, you can see that he clearly made a lot of improvement. And the hair is longer, but also it has more width to it as well. Anyway, if you want to get any sort of hair loss advice, non-clinical hair loss advice, if you want to review the literature when it comes to hair transplants and just in general hair loss treatment that you can take to your doctor to discuss, I do non-medical consultations. Link in the description below. And yeah, hope to see you guys there. Anyway, peace out and see you in the next video. Peace.